Picture this. Five explorers lost deep within a cave with the hope of rescue dwindling by the day. Their supplies are meagre, hunger gnaws at them relentlessly, and the stark reality of a potentially deadly end sinks in. Their survival boils down to a decision that would forever impact their lives, the unthinkable act of cannibalism. This is the chilling premise of the case of the The Spelunsian Explorers, a thought experiment created by Harvard law professor Lon L. Fuller. When they are eventually rescued, they face murder charges for the unfortunate individual they consumed. As the case unfolds, differing perspectives on their guilt or innocence emerge, spotlighting the issues at the heart of this tale. The case of the Spelunsian explorers digs into moral complexities, particularly when individuals are forced into difficult choices for survival. It brings to light critical moral issues such as 1. Choices in extreme circumstances. The case raises questions about the moral implications of the explorers' actions. Confronted with dwindling resources in a life-threatening scenario, they resorted to cannibalism to stay alive. This provokes a debate about whether they can be held morally accountable given the extreme conditions. 2. Value of human life. The case prompts reflection on the importance of human life, pushing individuals to weigh the necessity of preserving life against other moral principles, such as respect for autonomy and the prohibition of harm. 3. Justice and compassion. It also brings to four issues of justice and fairness. Should the explorers be held accountable for their actions, or should they be shown mercy due to the extraordinary situation they found themselves in? This raises questions about the balance between justice and compassion. 4. Legal versus moral obligations. The case highlights the pull between what the law requires and what morality dictates. The law might call for one course of action, but individuals might feel the moral impulse to act differently, igniting a discussion about the alignment of law and morality. In essence, the case of the Spelunchian explorers is a profound exploration of morality in extreme circumstances, prompting readers to grapple with complex ethical questions regarding human behavior and the essence of justice. In this intricate and challenging Supreme Court case, the viewpoints of each judge emerge distinctively each rooted in a unique approach to legal application. Chief Justice Trupani stands firmly in the realm of legal absolutism, asserting the defendants guilty of murder. His conviction in staunchly applying the law as written, regardless of the case's circumstances, is significant, though he does hint at the potential of executive clemency. Diverging from the majority, Justice Foster adopts a literalist viewpoint. His argument centers on the absence of criminal intent, or mens rea, from the explorer's actions, leading him to advocate for their exoneration. Justice Tatting voices a dissenting perspective, adopting a broader, more flexible approach. Viewpoint suggests the court's prerogative to consider the moral and equitable factors of the case, proposing a pardon for the defendants as a fitting resolution. The voice of legal realism echoes in Justice Keene's dissent. His focus is on the practical ramifications of the court's ruling, warning that a verdict of guilt-guilt could potentially shake the public's faith in the legal system. Finally, Justice Handy represents a utilitarian approach, diverging from the majority. He weighs the broader societal implications of the court's ruling, championing a pardon as the route for serving society's greater good. Each unique viewpoint represented by the judges underscores the multifaceted strategies used to apply the law, exhibiting the challenges of decision-making in this complex case. The case of the Spelunchian Explorers, through its meticulous dissection of various legal theories and moral dilemmas, emphasizes the inherent tension between law and the human condition. It elucidates the intricate relationship between moral dilemmas and legal principles, and ultimately the pivotal role of judges in this delicate interplay. This case does not critique the judges themselves, but uses their divergent opinions as a means to delve into the depths of legal theories and moral conundrums. Regardless of whether one aligns with the majority or the dissenting perspectives, the case serves as a stark reminder of the profound responsibility borne by those who interpret and enforce the law. The dilemma it presents is not just a thought exercise, but a question that we must all ask ourselves. What if we were in the explorer's position? Would we make the same choices for survival? And how would we deal with the legal repercussions of those choices?
The case of the Spelunchian explorers indeed serves as a potent catalyst for challenging our perspectives on law, justice and morality. Voice over. Now focus our attention on the fascinating nation of Nepal, where the case of the Spelunchian explorers resonates with particular depth. The intricate legal and moral questions that emerge in extreme situations as examined in this case are not restricted to a single jurisdiction. In Nepal, as in any place on the globe, legal principles can be subjected to unique interpretation and application under unusual or dire circumstances. As a country nestled in the Himalayas, Nepal, with its distinctive geographical and cultural backdrop, often encounters instances where the law must pioneer unfamiliar territories. Moral quandaries are woven into the very fabric of human existence and Nepal is no exception. As a society rich in history, culture and tradition, inhabitants may find themselves making hard choices for survival or the safeguarding of others. The Spelunzian explorer's case echoes these dilemmas, prompting discussion on the ethical underpinnings of such decisions. Deciphering the law in Nepal, akin to the Spelunzian case, is a process. Judges are tasked with harmonizing the written law with the essence of justice, often invoking a range of legal philosophies to reach a verdict. This case therefore serves as an insightful reference for comprehending the complexities of judicial decision-making. The case of the Spelunzian explorers, in fact, is a recurrent theme in legal education and academic debate in Nepal. It offers a stage for delving into the subtle aspects of law, justice and morality, nurturing critical thinking among budding minds. While the specific legal and cultural context of Nepal may be disparate from the speculative scenario presented in the Spelunzian Explorer's case, its dissection of fundamental legal and moral principles makes it an apt resource for legal education, judicial decision-making and ethical dialogue in Nepal. As we plunge into the narrative of the Spelunzian explorers, we continue to unearth its far-reaching significance and enduring influence. Voice over. The case of the Spelunzian explorers has sparked extensive study and intense debates. One such debate revolves around the claim that the case oversimplifies the complexities of legal reasoning and decision-making, presenting them as a binary choice between strict adherence to the law and a more flexible, moralistic approach. Some scholars argue it fails to adequately represent the full spectrum of legal philosophies and approaches, thereby questioning its educational effectiveness. The case has also stirred ethical discussions about the actions of the explorers and the role of the law in extreme situations. These debates often overshadow its legal implications. Questions have been raised on the practical relevance of the case to real-life legal disputes arguing that its hypothetical scenario is too extreme and uncommon to provide useful insights. Observations have been made about the case's portrayal of five male judges, thereby raising questions about the limited diversity in perspectives and experiences represented. Yet, the case of the Spelunzian explorers continues to command attention in legal and philosophical circles for its thought-provoking exploration of legal theory, moral dilemmas and the nature of justice. As we continue to delve into the case's complexities, its enduring impact on legal education and discourse becomes more evident. Voice over. As we explore in depth, various objections have been lodged against each judge in the case of the Spelunzian explorers. Leading the panel, we encounter Chief Justice Trupani. Detractors contend that his majority opinion leans heavily on legal formalism, favoring the law's literal interpretation over the plea for mercy in dire circumstances. He is often chastised for his failure to acknowledge the case's unique and unprecedented nature. Advancing to Justice Foster, opponents highlight his rigid adherence to legal literality, often overlooking the ethical and moral dimensions of the case. His dissent has been known to disregard the explorer's extenuating circumstances. Turning our attention to Justice Tatting, one can see his proposal for judicial discretion, incorporating moral and equitable aspects. However, he lacks a defined framework, leading some to question his departure from legal precedent. Next in line is Justice Keane. Skeptics remark that his legal realist viewpoint lays an excessive emphasis on the practical implications of the verdict, often sidelining the overarching principles of justice and morality. Rounding out the panel, we find Justice Handy. His utilitarian stance has been called out for its failure to recognize the individual explorer's rights and dignity fully. His dissent, many argue,
could serve as a veiled justification for morally dubious actions, supposedly aimed at augmenting societal benefit. These contentious points illuminate the spectrum of theoretical approaches and perspectives embodied by the judges, underlining the intricacies of legal and moral reasoning in challenging contexts.